Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. I've been up here a couple times, but I don't think I introduced myself. If you're new to Journey Church, my name's Eric, and we're certainly glad that you're here. I'll be up here after the service. I'd love to talk to you. Feel free to come up and say hello. I'd love to meet you and your family and get to know you. Um, One of the things that we want to let the cat out of the bag about right from the get-go today is we conclude this redemption series. We'll talk just a little bit about what we've been redeemed from, but what we've been redeemed for is to live a life of mission. I mean, and, and that's what it's all about. And we need to model that to the next generation. And I want to present you with three different opportunities on Wednesday or on Thursday alone, on July 4th alone, so that you can get out of the church and go out and make a difference and go out there and impact people in really a very simple way. But it could be profound because if God uses this as an opportunity to touch them and draw them into church or draw them into a small group or draw them into a conversation about Jesus, they may come to know Jesus and live for him all the rest of the days of their life. I know one family, I won't mention them by name, but they they wrote in a post on Facebook that they met us last year on July 4th when we were doing these outreaches. They showed up. This person had a significant problem with alcohol. He ended up overcoming alcohol, and they're now on the track to become some of the leaders here in the church. I mean, God uses these simple and silly things sometimes to touch people's hearts. So since there's a lot of kids in here today, this is I'm asking you a question, kids. You need to reply back to me if you... How many of you kids like fireworks? Any kids like to see fireworks? You got to yell out better than that. How many of you kids like parades? You? Yeah, that's awesome. How many of you kids like barbecues? Woo, adults. How many of you adults like barbecues? Hallelujah. So. You know, on July 4th, we have a lot of those things planned. There's a parade in Middleburg, right? And we're going to be out there as a Journey Church family. In the evening, there's a fireworks display that's going on over at Moose Haven in Orange Park. And we want you and your family to come out there as a way of modeling what it means to be outreach-minded, to live a life on mission, to be about the business of the kingdom. See, we spend so much time on ourselves that sometimes we forget about the importance of going outside of the walls the church and we have some wonderful opportunities there's papers there that you're welcome to sign and turn into the welcome center on your way out if you'd like to join us but you don't have to just show up out there that we're going to be meeting up at 8 a.m in uh, first baptist of middleburg where the floats uh, all line up so if you want to be a part of that and join us on the float meet us out there at 8 a.m look for the journey church float in the evening at 8 p.m we're going to be meeting up on the moose haven property near 17 and kingsley if you go into the property you're going to see a massive flagpole that's there. We're going to meet up near the flags. The events are rain or shine, or at least the evening event is rain or shine, because what usually happens here in Florida, if you haven't lived here very long, every July 4th it rains at about 6 p.m., and it goes away by about 7.30 or 8, and then the fireworks still go on, and it's a wonderful time, so we'd like to hang out. This year, we had a team come up with a one-up idea, because some of you might already have plans. You might be with family on July 4th. You might be doing a block party or something of that nature, we want you to have an opportunity to outreach as well. So a team went ahead and put together these glow bracelet packets that are the same things that we're going to be using at the other outreaches. So maybe you're in your own neighborhood, go ahead and assemble some of these things and put a Journey Church little you know, invite card on them. They already have little holes, so you just literally put the the band through the hole and give them out at the party. At the end of the service, we'll have them available right up here at the pulpit. So if you've got plans already, but you still want to use it as an outreach opportunity, come up here at the end of the service and grab a few of those bags. You could put 20 of them on yourself. It's all cool. Whatever you want to do, just go out there and represent Jesus that day, right? So we're talking about modeling him, about living for him. Say this with me. God is great. His word is true and it works in my life. Do you believe that today? Amen. Well, Father, we come before you, our hearts open wide to what you would speak to each of us as 
we bring this redemption series to a conclusion? Would it have a lasting and lifelong and even eternal impact in our lives? Would the things that we learned here and that we put into practice in our life, would they change us forevermore and give us an opportunity to help advance your kingdom by living a healthy, happy, free, joyous life that would impact the lives of others? In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I have one final thing that I want to bring to your attention before we get into the meat of the message today. Um, if you've been here since the beginning of the year, we've really laid forth this spiritual mandate for growth, that it's important that we're continually growing spiritually, even as the kids who are in here next year, chances are they're going to be a little bit taller than they are today. They're going to be growing in the natural. We need to be growing in the spiritual every single day. We can't stagnate. We can't fall back for any long seasons of time. So as as we're at the last weekend, the midpoint of the year right now, I would ask you to revisit your gospel life plan. I would ask you to rethink about where you're at spiritually. Has the first part of the year been just supercharged for you and you've been growing a ton spiritually? Well, amen. If it hasn't been that way and there's been some stagnation or some regression, make the second part of the year better than the first part of the year by getting down to business and doing the things that you need to do to grow in the spirit, right? So one of the cool resources that you can go check out is journeyuniversity.org, journeyuniversity.org. We have all of the resources for spiritual growth that we recommend out there. And if you need a custom plan for yourself, go ahead and fill out the gospel questionnaire and we will get a coach to contact you and help you start a spiritual growth plan off for yourself. So we're concluding this series today. We've talked a lot about the need to be rescued from our hurts, our habits, our hangups. We talked about how Jesus and his finished work on the cross brings hope to everyone who struggles. And today we want to focus our attention a little bit more on what we are redeemed for. I think it's kind of a two-part answer. The first part being that God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to have joy. Isn't that good? How many of you know when you're caught up in the middle of any of those hurts, habits, or hangups, it's usually not the most joyful season in your life, right? In fact, you might be causing pain to yourself or to others. You're certainly not in a position where you're really advancing the kingdom of God. So one of the beauties about God is even though this story is not so much about us as it is about him, right? He, he wants us to experience joy in this life. Do you get, some of you are like, no, I don't want to experience joy. I just, I'm, I'm just here today. Man, kids, they run around with such joy on their faces, do they not? The Bible tells us, come into the kingdom as if you were little children. So all you stuffy people out there, Jesus wants you to experience peace and joy and, and not let the things of this world bog you down and get you down because life in the natural has a way of doing that, does it not? It could beat us up. It could take the wind out of us. And God wants to breathe new life into our hearts and souls. The second part of it is that we might live a life on mission, that others might come to know Jesus as well, that the next generation might serve him even as we are attempting to serve him with all our heart, strength, soul, and mind. Here's what happens in our lives because we don't want to see them perpetuated into their lives. Does that make sense to you? So let me just bring it home a little bit more. What do I mean by this? Again, this is a generalization, but if your family had an idol of success and your family life was all about money and your family life was all about getting the right job and your family life was all about that kinds of a thing, chances are the kids perpetuate the same things, right? If you are an active alcoholic, if you are active in drug addiction or alcoholism and your family is a mess, chances are your children are gonna suffer from that, right? Oftentimes they have the same habits. We had a situation in our own home not long ago where we have conversations like that. Do you know your daddy is an alcoholic or was an alcoholic, right? Do you know that your brother is an alcoholic, that your, br my brother and sister are alcoholics, that Mary Jo's dad died from alcoholism. So if you drink, you might just become an alcoholic. So don't take the chance of drinking. Can I get an amen, right? So we, we don't want to walk in fear of those things, but there's danger in those things. Sometimes that's how life works out. So broken families tend to yield more broken families. We are in part a product of how we grew up and with whom we associate ourselves with. Isn't that true? 
There's people as believers that you probably no longer associate yourself with because that lifestyle that you were living, if they're active in an opposite lifestyle, then you can't be around that anymore. If you're an alcoholic, chances are, if you're redeemed from alcoholism, you don't go back and hang in the bars every day. Why? Because chances are that one day, you know they call that stuff spirits for a reason, right? Those spirits are gonna creep up on you and they're gonna wanna get you to start drinking again, right? So you gotta think about these things and just have a little bit of common sense. But hope comes in when the people of God are rescued by Jesus. When we submit those hurts, habits, and hangups in our life to him and we're rescued from them, now we can perpetuate some really good things in the lives of those around us and the lives of those who are coming behind us, right? So it's important that we get freed up because when we do, there's stories in the Bible that says you and your whole family will be saved, right? There's promises that we can stand on. When people get saved, when people get redeemed, guess what amazing things begin to happen? Their entire families can get saved, neighborhoods can get changed, nations can get changed, entire people groups can come to know Jesus. Is anybody excited in here or just me? I'm excited to be redeemed. I'm fired up that God's changed my life because if I look back at what my life used to be, do you know what kind of legacy I would have left my children? Oh my gosh. But the other thing that I need to come to grips with in my own life, especially for those of you who are here who have been redeemed from a lot, you see, one of the things that I did in my life for all too long was I overcame a big thing in drug addiction and alcoholism that was almost all-consuming or was all-consuming in my life, and then I rode on that for too long. What do I mean by that? See, I said, okay, I've overcome this really big thing, but there's these 10 other things that I still need to overcome, but I'm putting all those things on the back burner because, man, I overcame this big thing, right? So I don't need to deal with these other things, but you know what God's been doing with me through this series? He's saying, Eric, you got to deal with these other things. Maybe you haven't overcome some really big things but there's a lot of little things in your life. Maybe you've got some character defects. Maybe you've got some issues. Maybe you're angry all the time. Maybe you're nasty to other people. You know, Christians aren't supposed to be angry, nasty, joyless people. That's right. That's right. If you are, you need to be redeemed in Jesus' name, right? Man, we've been saved from hell. We get to go to heaven. We get to go to the promised land. We've been freed from bondage of Egypt, as we've been talking about during this series. We get to live for the King of kings and Lord of lords. There's to be joy in the house of God. Hallelujah.